Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So this is part two in a series of videos about how to grow giant sunflowers or maybe the tallest sunflowers. So in this video I'll be looking more at the seeds, how to sow the seeds and how to look after the seedlings when you have a young plant. Now the previous video was all about the, getting the right variety. So you really need to get the right variety of plant for getting a giant sunflower. And the next video after this will be about aspect and where to plant it in the garden. So when it comes to planting sunflower seeds, the timing is very important. You really need to time it around about March time for most climates. Now the reason timing is so important is if you're too late, for a start you're not going to have a long enough growing season and if you want to grow a really tall sunflower you need to grow a variety that flowers as late as possible so it can spend as long as possible growing because as soon as it flowers it stops getting any more height. So you need a very long growing season to get the tallest sunflower and if you start it too late the growing season will be too short and you'll basically the frost will come and kill the sunflower before that. But another reason is when it comes to light levels, the best light levels are May, June, July. That's when you have the longest days and the most intense sunlight. If you start your plant around about May time, you'll have a very small seedling. Although it will be growing in the sunniest part of the year, it will just have a few leaves. So use this plant for example. You can see here, total leaf space is quite small. So there's only a limited amount of sunlight that it can absorb. But if this plant was much bigger and an older plant and had massive leaves that could absorb lots of sunlight, then it could really turbocharge its growth and grow even faster. So what you want to do is you want to have an established sunflower by around about May time so that it can have lots of leaf coverage and make the most of that strong sunshine. If it has lots of leaves at that time of year, it's really gonna grow really fast. But if it's just a small plant and you can only get a small amount of light at that time of year when the, the light's at its best, it's, you're really gonna get set back. So you want to make the most of that growing time. Although August and September are also quite good growing months, the sun gets a lot weaker. And by September, the sun is actually just as weak as it is in March. So you want to really make sure that you get the beginning of the season because that's when the best growing months are in most climates. So although you want to start the plants early to make sure you get the whole growing season, there is a risk if you start them too early, you can have other problems, which is why March is around about the best time for most places. So if you start them too early, there is the risk of frost or if you're growing them inside, you're gonna to have to have grow lights and other things to keep them growing in the months when the sun isn't at its best. So you don't wanna start them too early for that reason. And there is another reason why you don't wanna start them too early and that's to do with the daylight length. Now sunflowers, they don't really mind how many hours of daylight they get per day. It doesn't change when they flower normally. There are several plants where they use the daylight length to determine when they should flower. Sunflowers don't do that for most of their lives, but in the first three weeks of their life, there's quite an important stage. So in the first three weeks of the sunflower's life, if it is exposed to less than 14 hours of light per day, it will basically trigger it to flower a lot earlier. Whereas if it gets more than 14 hours of light per day, it will delay its flowering by several weeks and you'll get a much taller plant. So it's very important that if you do sow it before the spring equinox and it gets less than 14 hours of light a day, you might actually get it flowering earlier and you'll end up with a shorter plant. So if you do sow it before that date, you'll probably need grow lights just to trick it into thinking it's longer daylight hours. So I'm now gonna go ahead and explain sowing the seeds and how to start off your sunflowers. So when it comes to the seeds, you wanna try and get the biggest one that you have in your packet. Now I refer to my previous video when it comes to variety choice because it is important to get the right variety. So when it comes to sowing the seeds, having a good healthy seed will make a big difference in your plant in the long term. The reason being if you start with a small weak seedling, it will take a long time to get going. It will have very small leaves when it begins its life and the more leaves it has and the bigger the leaves the faster it can photosynthesize and get energy from the sun so if you start off with a small seedling you're just gonna it's gonna take a little bit longer for your plant to get established so if possible if you're looking at your seeds always pick the largest one so this one for example is quite skinny it's a little bit shriveled up that probably won't germinate at all there's a few other ones where it's a little bit small and they might be okay, they might grow into a decent sunflower, but if you're trying to grow the tallest possible, you really want to get the best head start. So I would go for some of the biggest and fattest seeds in your seed packet. Uh, I would sow those ones because then that will give you the most chance of success. And when it comes to the seeds, you also want to make sure that they're not damaged or broken in any way. Sometimes you can occasionally find small holes on the seed where a, a little worm or something has gone in and eaten the seeds. So try to avoid them as well because they're most likely not to succeed or they'll be a little bit stunted and weaker plants. So now you've chosen your good seeds, it's time to pot them up into plant pots. Now this plant at the back is a great example of why you shouldn't put them in a small pot. So I purposely put this in a tiny pot. I think this is about a four centimeter size pot. It really is tiny. And the problem with that is that roots get restricted quite early on in their growth. 
Sunflowers are relatively large seeds and when the seedling first grows it actually puts a lot of growth into its roots and quickly establishes a good root system. If that is inhibited in any way by having a very small pot size what you'll get is a plant like this which is basically very small leaves. Each new leaf isn't a lot bigger than the last and this has also been grown in a relatively low light level environment which is why it's grown so tall. So you really need to be quite careful with your pot size. Even if you had one in this size and you transplanted it almost as soon as it germinated you'd still probably be a little bit too small and a little bit too pot bound. And I can show you on this, the roots are re relatively well established. You see there, it's already filling the pot. And this is something I'll talk about slightly later in the video, but they have a, a, a tap root which goes to the bottom. If that starts to spiral around, you'll never get such a big uh, plant as if you had it without it getting pot bound. So you really do need to make sure you start off in the decent pot size. So I find at least a nine centimeter pot is a good size. I would go maybe a bit bigger, maybe up to a 15 centimeter or one liter pot for starting your seeds off in. I'm doing nine centimeter here. That's about the, the minimum size that you want to be going for. And when it comes to compost choice, you can use seedling cutting compost, but I find sunflower seeds, because they're so large, and the sunflower seedlings are quite a hungry plant, if you use seedling cutting compost, you'll need to start feeding almost straight away, because the nutrients that the seed contains, is only enough for it to get its root system established and then start its first set of leaves. It then needs feed almost straight away. So I actually go for multi-purpose compost, quite a rich compost, which has plenty of moisture retention, so that it doesn't dry out or get stressed at any point. And also I make sure that it's got a little bit of feed in it. Most multi-purpose composts will. Try to avoid the multi-purpose composts which say they have six months of feed because that's a little bit too much even for sunflower seedlings. But if you're transplanting into a larger pot after the, the seedling has established then a feed like that is perfect because they do need a lot of feed. But when they're just starting to germinate they only need a very small amount. So any multi-purpose compost should do as long as it's not a high feed variety. So when it comes to sowing the seed it's relatively straightforward and easy. Sunflower seeds are quite large, so what you want to do is just make a small hole in the compost. Now it doesn't need to be too deep, probably about an inch in depth or so. You don't want it really shallow because then the seed might get pushed out before developing a full root system, or it might dry out too quickly. And you don't want it super deep either, just because if it's really deep then the plant will use a lot of energy growing up through the compost. By the time it reaches the surface, it won't have a huge amount of energy left for its first set of leaves. So. About two or three centimeters or an inch depth is about right. If you've got a variety with really large seeds, you could almost go to two inches of depth. If you've got a variety with really small seeds, then maybe just half an inch. It does depend on the variety. There's different sizes of seeds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plant this in here, but it's also quite important to know which way up the seeds go. So with this variety, it's a bit less obvious than some of the others. And I'll get another variety of uh, sunflower just to show you. So there's two varieties here and they're both quite tall sunflowers. Basically what you want to do is plant them so the pointy end is pointing down to the soil. Now you can either do this by making a hole in the compost or if you want you can just push it through because the pointy end of the seed will easily push through the soil. And what happens is the root comes out at the very bottom of the uh, pointy section and then the whole seed will lift up and the seed itself will actually become the leaves of the new plant. And then the first set of leaves will then grow soon after. So you want to make sure the pointy end is down to the ground. So this way you can see with both of these the pointy end is pointing down. That's the direction they need to be in the soil and so they need to be in a vertical position just like that. And don't worry too much if they land on the side or they go upside down, the plant will still survive. It might just take them a little bit longer to come up to the surface, but ideally if you can have it pointing down, it will just come out the soil a little bit faster and with a bit more energy. So now that you've sown your sunflower seeds, it's time to encourage them into germination. Make sure the compost is nice and damp, but make sure it's not soaking wet or sodden with water. So if you have any holes in the bottom of the pot, you should make sure that they're free draining and the water can drain out the bottom of the holes. If it's sitting in a saucer with water underneath, the compost will be getting too wet and there's a risk that your seeds might rot. So you want damp compost but not soaking wet compost and you want to make sure you never want to let it dry out. If it dries out there's a risk that the seed can die and it won't succeed. So you want to keep it nice and damp the whole time. You also want to keep it around 25 degrees Celsius. That's the optimum temperature for germination. It will germinate at higher temperatures and lower temperatures but that's the kind of temperature you want to keep it at so that it will germinate at its fastest. Now it doesn't matter as I say, it doesn't have to be 100% 25 degrees all the time. Just a sunny window seal will do. But if you want the perfect results, 25 degrees Celsius is the best to go for. Now you should see germination in about one to three weeks. It really depends on the temperature. If you've got it on a warm location, you can be as little as a week or even three or four days. I've had it in the past, it, it germinate. But that's about the time frame. If nothing comes up after a month, it's either too cold, too dry, 
or if the seeds are not a good seed and it's died off. So that's something to bear in mind. If nothing's come up in about a month, you'll probably need to sow some more seeds. So it's always, always important to grow several of them at a time and then you make sure you don't miss the season because if you just plant one or two and they didn't come up after a month, you'd be delayed by a month in the season and then you've lost a lot of growing time. So make sure you sow several seeds. And also as each seed has slightly different genetic characteristics, some will be stronger than others, you wanna grow a whole load of seeds and then pick the absolute best seedling to be the one that grows in the best position to grow a giant sunflower. So once your sunflower has germinated, you should have a small plant. Originally the, the first two leaves will come up, will look, these are actually the ones at the back, these are actually from the actual seed themselves. The seed itself flattens out and becomes the seed leaves. And then above that you will get the first true leaves and then each leaf should get larger and larger if the plant is growing well and you get a nice well established plant. As I said this isn't a good example because I've purposely put it in a, in a small pot to give an example of a restricted plant but it should quite rapidly grow so you want to make sure it's got really good light levels a really warm south-facing windowsill would be ideal if you're living in the tropics do avoid the midday sun if it's on a windowsill but most places in the world a really sunny location will do well if you notice it's getting dried out a bit too quickly or the leaves are going yellow and you, you might not have good airflow on your windowsill, then move it outside to a location that's nice and warm with uh, better airflow. Basically, you want it around 25 degrees Celsius for optimum growing conditions. Anywhere between 20 and 30 should be fine, but if you're finding it's getting too hot in the sun, move it to a slightly cooler location. And you want to keep it damp at all times, similar to when it was germinating. If it dries out, it's going to get stressed. And the key thing to giant sunflowers is reducing stress. If a sunflower gets stressed, either with lack of water, wrong temperature, wrong light levels, or not enough fertilizer, it will then start to flower and it will flower too early and you won't get a really tall plant. So it's one of the most important things with growing giant sunflowers is making sure that they're really happy and they're not stressed for the whole growing period. So as I say, a nice warm sunny location, around 20 to 30 degrees should be fine. And if it's in a small pot like this, probably only a few weeks, less than a month maybe, of growing time, and then you wanna be putting it outside in the garden or in the final growing location. If it's still too cold where you are, if you live somewhere where you get frosts right into June, then you probably want to put them in a larger pot and grow them a little bit longer inside before they go outside. They can take very slight frost, so slightly below freezing shouldn't be a problem for, for sunflower seedlings. They can take a little bit colder temperatures than a mature plant. But if the temperatures are too cold that they're not gonna be growing much, so if temperatures are below probably 12 degrees Celsius during the day, you're gonna get very slow growth. So in countries in the world, where you have quite a cold spring, you might wanna just grow them inside for a bit longer to get them established before you place them outside. And as they're growing as a seedling, if you've got multi-purpose compost and they're not getting pot bound, you shouldn't need to worry about feeding them. But if you have used seed and cutting compost, I would use a, a balanced feed for now just to get them established until they're ready to go out into the garden. So there's a few advantages and disadvantages with starting them inside compared with starting them out in the garden. One of the main ones is the tap root. So when sunflowers first grow, they grow a very long tap root straight down and the tap root is normally longer than the actual growth of the plant. So you can see this one at the back, for example, the pot is tiny, the tap root is gonna be much shorter than the, the complete height of this plant. So that's not at all what it would like naturally in the wild, which is why this is getting stunted. If you can sow directly into your garden, you're gonna get much better results in the long run because your plant is gonna grow much bigger, it's going to have its tap root go right down to as deep as it wants to, which can be up to three meters deep at times, and you're going to get a much better established plant. But there's a lot of disadvantages with starting outside. One of the major ones is the, the climate and the environment. You can't control exactly the growing conditions. You might get a frost, it might be very windy, and you might not have the right light levels. So growing them inside can really help with grow lights and, and warm temperatures. And then the other problem with growing them outside, one of the huge ones here in the UK or any other kind of climate where it's quite damp, is slugs and snails. They absolutely love sunflowers, and if they see a small seedling, they can easily devastate it and eat it in one night. So you need to be really careful with slugs and snails. Make sure that you have some kind of protection against them, either using whatever methods work best for you. There's lots of different ways of avoiding slugs and snails, but that's one of the biggest problems with sunflowers. And there's a few other pests you gotta watch out for, especially if they're outside. One of them is aphids. Aphids can be a big problem. If you see them, washing them off with, with some water is normally one of the best methods. Uh, I tend to avoid pesticides. 
Um, and cutworm can also be a problem or vine weevil. So you just want to watch out for them. They're, they're some of the ones that can be a big problem at the beginning of the plant's life when it has a small root system and any kind of attack will severely damage it. So I'm now going to go outside and show you how you would plant it if you were going to plant the seed outside and also how you would transplant your young plant if you'd grown inside first and then you're ready to be transplanted into the, its final growing position. So I'm now going to show how you would sow the plants outside if you're going to sow them straight in the soil. Now you want to do the same thing, make sure you've got those decent seeds, the right variety. And when it comes to aspect and soil preparation, you want to basically get the best, richest soil you can in the sunniest location possible. Now I'll put more information about that in my next video. The next video is basically looking at soil preparation and growing location. So I won't get to talk about that much now. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sow four seeds in a small location. The reason being is you let them all grow up and then once they are just starting to get established, probably about three or four inches in height, maybe 10 centimeters in height, what you want to do is cut off the weakest ones and just leave one strong plant growing. So these ones I'm actually going to grow quite close together. The reason being I'm going to plant them inside an old plastic bottle. I'm in North Scotland, there's going to be frost, there's going to be bad winds in the next couple of months. So I need to have it in a slightly sheltered position and um, what you can do is you can buy cloches which are like a, a bell jar or, or some kind of clear plastic or glass container which goes over the soil and protects the plant. I don't have any of them at the moment so I'm just going to use an old drinks bottle which is clear plastic and that will just do the job. So I'm going to plant these quite close together so that they'll all fit underneath this bottle. If you were doing this and you had more space you could space them out a bit and let them grow for a bit longer until you decide which is the best one. But you definitely want to thin them out because you only want one plant so there's no competition for water and nutrients from the plant. So I'm just going to go ahead push these in the soil with the pointing end facing down. And then I'm just going to cover them with a plastic water bottle. I'm just going to slowly rotate this and get this a few centimeters deep so that it's secured. And then I'm going to put a small brick on the top just to stop it getting blown away. We have very strong winds here. If you're in a less windy location, you might not need to secure it quite as well. Now it's the same as looking after your seed inside, you want to make sure it's well watered. So before doing this, make sure that the soil has been well watered. If you're using a cloth like this, it can make it a little bit more difficult to keep it watered as it's hard to get the water in there. So definitely make sure you water it first and then you should find it germinates in a few weeks time. Now it can take a bit longer outside, but again, if it's warm enough, it should germinate within four weeks. So if you're growing your plant in the house, I'd like to give some advice on how to transplant it into the garden. So there's a couple of things to bear in mind. Again, make sure it's the best soil possible in a decent aspect and location. And when it comes to planting, try and plant them in a week that's a little bit less windy, maybe a bit cloudier. If it's been grown in a sheltered environment, it might need to be hardened off first. And to harden it off, what you need to do is to keep it in the pot, but take it outside on a, on a cloudy day with less wind, and then take it in at night and keep doing that, exposing it to more wind, more light, slowly over time. And within a couple of weeks, it should be hardened off and ready to go outside. If you just go straight outside, it's going to stress it. It's not used to the extra wind and light levels. So when it's ready for planting, what you want to do is you want to look at the, the base of the plant. So basically there's a special bit of stem at the bottom here where the first two leaves come up. These are actually the original seed and there's two types of stem. So the top is like the normal stem. The bottom is a special stem. You should be able to tell the difference with the color, but if you can't, the bottom bottom one is always smooth, almost kind of rubbery in texture. The top one tends to be a little bit furry and there should be some small hairs on there. So the bottom bit is actually um, a kind of a cross between a root and a stem. And if you bury this, it will actually grow side roots out of the stem. If you bury the, the top part of the stem where it's hairy, there won't grow any new roots normally. But this bottom one will very easily grow new roots. So if you bury this to about that depth, one, it stops it from being so leggy if you've got slightly taller seedlings and it can protect it a bit from the wind. But two, you get all these extra roots coming out. So you get a slightly deeper rooted plant and you get more feeding roots. And if you've already got sunflower growing in the ground, sometimes earthing it up with soil is a good way of achieving this. And this will just protect it a bit from the wind and you'll get extra root system. Now there is one very small disadvantage with this. If you earth it up, the join where the two um, types of stems meet is slightly weaker than the rest of the plant. So there's a chance that, that can be broken off. So normally when it's windy, you see the whole plant stem 
flexes. If you'd plant it there, it flexes just at that one point. You've got much more chance of wind rock damaging it. So although it's better for the root system to plant it deeper, if you're in a very windy location or you don't have enough support for the plant, it can make it more susceptible to snapping off at that point. So if you do plant it deeper, make sure you support it very well for most of the growing season. Allow it to flex higher up, but don't allow it to flex right at the join because that's a definite weak section. So I'm just going to go ahead and plant this now and plant it round about that depth there so that it has all these extra roots growing. So that's that small plant now planted. Now it's quite often a good idea to mulch the soil. This just stops any weeds coming up and the weeds will compete for water and nutrients. So you want to make sure there's no weeds around the roots of your sunflower plant. You also want to make sure it's well watered at this stage and you need to keep it very well watered for the first few weeks until the roots get established. But even going forward, you'll want to be keeping it free from drought stress. So it still needs good watering for the rest of the season, but it's most important at the transplant stage. And one other thing you can do at this stage is if it's very tall and leggy like this one here is gonna get damaged by the wind, you can put in a small stake just to the side of it. Just remember where the planting hole was so you don't go through the roots and just tie it up and make sure it's got a little bit of support. But I tend to avoid uh, supporting the plants at the very young stage if they're not as leggy as this because it just helps to strengthen the stem slightly and they'll be less susceptible to wind damage later on in the season but if you want the absolute tallest sunflower possible you, are, you actually want to keep it staked although you won't get such a strong plant and it's weaker to wind in the long term you've got a better chance of getting a taller plant if you don't let the stem flex as you'll get a longer thinner stem i'll go a lot more into that in the next video where i talk about aspect and planting location so that's all for this video as i say the main difference between inside and outside is you get the tap root development better with a directly sown plant and then it'll have a better root system and it can tap that deep water underground but you then sacrifice the ability to have a more controlled growing environment so that's all for this video i'll see you guys in the next video which is all about soil improvement and then what aspect to plant it in how much sunlight it needs and then later in the season i'll start talking about care over the summertime and then advanced tips to get the absolute tallest sunflower possible